morning, everyone. I'm Fiji, and I'm hoping that everyone in the audience is here for the speaking event for today entitled, How to Access Design Resources, Supportive Technologies and Virtual Product Development. All right, so let's get this started. Our speaker for today is the Chief Executive Officer of ID4A Technologies. She holds an extensive experience in the field of environmental design, industrial design and product development, user experience and design strategy, production design and architectural design um, systems and technologies. Throughout her career, she worked in cross-disciplinary collaborations with leading global companies in design, technology, and business innovation, such as Steelcase, General Electronics, Jet Propulsion Lab, NASA, Walmart, and Amtrak, in addition to many R&D collaborations with privately held companies and research laboratories on proprietary projects and innovative processes in advanced manufacturing. So please help me welcome our speaker for this morning, Rania Hotet. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for this introduction. Today, I want to talk to you about how supportive technologies help and what virtual product development actually means. I'm going to also introduce a new technology platform that we are working on and uh, explain why it's valuable for designers and innovators to have this platform exist today. So virtual product development is basically a process that takes place in a completely digital environment. Designers use this process to visualize their ideas and communicate what the product idea is about. And it usually goes into four major stages and four major components, which is the design process, which is the 2D and 3D formalization of what the product would look like and a visual representation of it. The second main component of product development is simulation, which is testing and running a lot of simulation tests virtually on what the product will perform like under certain external forces or even internal ones. And the third one is product staging, which has to do with consumer research and analysis in order to understand how this product could be positioned in the market. Finally, after design, simulation, and staging, we go into the digital manufacturing process, which is taking the visualization to a whole other level on how we're going to translate that into a physical product. And that would be the transition that goes from there. So Digital manufacturing processes use different types of tools, either 3D printing or other digital manufacturing means such as CNC and other also advanced technologies such as robotic manufacturing and automation, which is also something that we do in our company. We do develop custom automation tools for uh, particular processes that happen privately in R&D labs as we just spoke about. So why is virtual product development important? mainly because it allows for ideas to be tested at much earlier stage before a cost is put into that. And the goal is to have the efficiency to understand what the failure would look like in the market if we were to bring this out, if any failures would happen in the manufacturing process. So it is an amazing opportunity to reduce the time and also the risk value while trying to develop a new product to take it to market. Usually, virtual product development happens in a completely web-based environment where designers, consumers or customers, and other value chain partners will collaborate together in one space in order to solve one idea. And they usually all work around one file in real time. And that's what makes the idea stage really fast because this is when they could produce what the next working idea would look like in a much faster way. The process of planning when it comes to product development is really new when it comes to virtual product planning to the manufacturing industry. It's been around in the construction industry for a long time, and that's known as BIM or Building Information Modeling. But it's definitely still new, and it's in an adoption phase in the manufacturing industry to run these processes virtually. And that's something that our company helps with. Even if the virtual product development process runs smoothly, once you pass the fourth stage and you're going from the prototype and testing phase into manufacturing phase, 
a lot of issues start to arise, especially with early stage companies that don't necessarily have the supportive technologies and systems to help them carry this idea further. This is where supportive technologies come in and having resources that are available online to help designers and inventors and engineers and even startup founders and entrepreneurs that have new product ideas to have access to their resources in one place. And that's what our company is also working on right now. We've been developing a new platform for the last year to bring all these resources together in one place for users so they could connect directly with supporting technologies, solutions, and services at any stage of their manufacturing cycle so they could bring their product to life. And that is actually one of the key issues that we were able to spot by working with our own clients for many years is that we have to create these connections in order to push their idea further by working with affiliate networks. So what we're trying to do is how can we make all this knowledge and all this expertise that we've developed over years accessible to more people? We decided that the best way to make this happen is that users already have access to very advanced virtual product development tools. What they don't really have is a place for resources that could help them expedite their process even faster through connecting to other solutions that might not exist in that one particular virtual space that's available to them. So our product is called Flow, and uh, we launched it last year in a soft launch in Dubai and in London to expand the platform into the European and the Middle Eastern market. And we're going to be launching this platform here in the United States by the end of this year. So you could visit our site and sign up as early as August 1st to get access to all different types of solutions and services in one place at any stage that you're at with the idea. I want to also talk about other common challenges that happen in the manufacturing process is that Designers sometimes, they don't necessarily understand the practicalities that come with launching a product to market. They might be able to successfully virtually develop a product and be able to run their first manufacturing batch, for example. But then another issue becomes marketing. How do we actually channel this product into the market? And part of what we're trying to do with Flow as well is be able to expand their resources to connect with supporting services to help them launch these products. So it's not only about connecting with services to help you in the idea phase or in the prototyping phase or even in the manufacturing phase. It's also about connecting users with supporting services that would help them to launch and channel their product into the market through different means. Another challenge that this space has is investment and funding. As we all know, industrial product development is very costly. And a lot of inventors and entrepreneurs and designers, they might find it very difficult. Even if they have a beautiful genius idea, they might be intimidated by the fact that they cannot afford to take that idea to the next level because they don't have the financial resources for that. After you've been able to get to that stage of marketing and you understood what your market is like and how you're going to channel it, then you can tap into other resources of funding and investments through Flow directly and you'll be able to locate different types of financial solutions, if that is through crowdfunding or through private funding or other types of financial investments that are particularly interested in this industry of hardware, IoTs, wearables, interested in the manufacturable uh, world of physical objects, which is a whole different world than strictly technology. With that, I would like to open any questions that you have. If any of you are in the space or trying to do anything within the space, if you have any questions for me that I could answer, I'd love that. Again, I'd stay tuned for August 1st, pre-launch in the United States to flowbetter.com. Thank you. Um, for the last four years since we founded the company, we've worked with clients that are in diverse verticals. We've worked with people that are developing medical devices, for example. We've worked with people that are developing IoTs. 
We've worked with people that are strictly developing prototypes for architectural components. We've worked with people that are doing consumer products. The process is exactly the same for any type of product that you're trying to develop, whether that is a consumer product, an IoT, a wearable. And it always starts with an idea. You can only go so far with it if you're not supported with technologies and services and solutions that would help you because you don't have the capacity to do that. So let's say you're trying to develop a wearable device that tracks your sleeping patterns, for example. I'm giving an example in this because it's an integration. It's a double project. It's a hardware issue and it's a software issue. And when you have products that need more integration, it becomes more of a complex problem as well. And then it becomes about how are we going to find the software solution and how are we going to integrate both together? Because once you start to integrate systems, you have another design problem and they have to work together. You can come on Flow and you could select at what stage you're at with your product idea and you'll be able to filter through services and solutions on the platform directly and be able to connect with them about the project that you're working on so you could get the support that you need. There is no one place for all these types of solutions that exist out there and this is why we created Flow. Because we found that in order to get a product to market, you want to be able to get all the support you need at every single stage to close that loop. So that's the idea. Is so you could connect to different services and solutions at different stages of the process anytime so you don't get stuck in the cycle and not know what to do next. Um, so in this process um, that you're going to does flow offer mentorship in helping people who are bringing these ideas to the platform? As far as, um, so like she was asking, if you have an idea and you did it to the blue line, mm -hmm. and at that point you're not sure if you should stay there or take it further, does your program offer any um, mentorship in that? Yes, so you're basically going between design to prototyping in that stage that you just explained. And in order for you to know if your product has potential, then you need to go into market research and validation. And that's part of the cycle. So if you do come to Flow, you'll be able to locate also supporting services that could help you validate your product idea if you're not sure if you want to take it to the next level. The thing is about all these nuances in the process is that if you skip one of them, you might end up having a huge wasted cost that was unnecessary only if you knew that I shouldn't make this product in this particular color, for example, because this market is not going to adopt it. Or if I only knew that I could make it out of this material rather than that, then I would have saved myself hundreds of thousands of dollars in production. Or if I knew I could produce my product in India versus in, in the United States, <laughs> which is a big question mark in manufacturing, is where, then I would have also saved myself a lot of money. So all these nuances, once they're tackled, you'll be able to get a much better understanding of what you're making. And then you stop wasting your time and energy in searching, locating services, and also doing things that might not really help you to go to the next level or drop the idea if the validation is not there. Either way, you're saving time and money. Do you have any more questions? When a client goes to you, um, I mean, there's different stages like marketing and design. Um, can you like, briefly describe like, the team, the team that goes into it? Like, I don't know, obviously engineers, but what other professions? So you mean on, on the business's end or on your end? On our end. We're trying to create a resourceful platform by bringing other supportive technologies into play to fill the gaps of what we cannot do. We're trying to scale the solution so more people could have access to it. For example, when you're in consultation mode, you have a project manager, and then that project manager is responsible for handling this project from start to finish. What happens here is that on the business end, you cannot really scale your solutions beyond that. 
with a platform like Flow, we'll be able to have more resources available to our consumers and customers that we cannot necessarily provide as a consultation company, for example. And the way the business will be handling your project, it really depends on what stage you're at, what kind of project you have, what your budget is, and what they are capable of doing. So what kind of services they also offer and how they do it, how they operate within their own organization. If they do give you the option of having a project manager, then you get that. If they do everything virtually online, then you'll be in a situation where you're virtually working with them on producing your idea. So it really depends on how each service and company provides their own services as well. Does that make sense? Thank you. Thank you.